Thank you and good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Our city is heartbroken at the receipt of the news that one of our very own Army Reservist Specialist Brianna Alexandria Moffitt, a Savannah native, uh, lost her life while supporting Operation Inherit Resolve. She was 23 years old. She was a Windsor Forest Knight, and she was a citizen soldier among young people who go to service to be able to serve their community, their state, and their nation. And she was on duty doing what people do in the protection of our nation and our interest. No parent, no community ever expects to hear the type of news that Brianna's parents received. And certainly, our thoughts and prayers go out to her and her family. We also uh, have ordered that the flags on city buildings be lowered effective immediately until after the final services for Brianna Moffitt. I hope and trust that the United States of America will actively investigate and hold those accountable for these types of acts. We must protect Americans, and we must protect those of us that protect us. I also extend my deepest condolences to the family and friends of the other two Georgians killed in this senseless attack um, and their families. Again, um, while the facts are still being determined, um, we know that it did not have to happen. And my hope and prayer um, is that accountability uh, is the key. The Bible says that there is no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friends. And we know in a military community like Savannah, where so many people have put themselves in that situation, and so many from here that live here, whose families are here, are in theaters around the world, putting themselves in that situation. We recognize that there is no greater love, and so we love Brianna Moffitt for loving us. And may her memory be a blessing. Yesterday, I was honored to welcome uh, a great friend and heroine of mine uh, to Savannah, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, uh, Marsha L. Fudge. We're grateful for her visit, and this was the culmination of um, engagements on the federal level, particularly with Secretary Fudge, as she alluded to, um, for us to be able to tell the story of Savannah and talk about the things that are happening in Savannah. And I was grateful that she took the time and her very busy schedule to come uh, and not only announce the billions of dollars being released by the Biden administration across the nation, but certainly to bring a $4 million check to Savannah and announced a 15 percent increase of funding provided to help combat homelessness. The Secretary said it right yesterday, Savannah has a plan. 
We have a good plan. We have the right partners at the table. We're rowing in the same direction. We made a commitment over four years ago to focus attention on houseless residents who need a hand up and not a hand out. We made a decision that we were not going to criminalize homelessness, but we were going to make it a crime not to do anything about homelessness. Um, and so the secretary could have been anywhere in the nation, um, but she chose Savannah because of this work that we are actively engaged in. Um, we are setting, setting precedents, and we will continue uh, to do so. After the presser yesterday, uh, she had a roundtable discussion with our homeless and housing providers so that we could tell her um, specifically about the contributions we've been able to make, the triumphs we've been able to make, and then also talk about the challenges and ways through. And I will tell you, it was a very fruitful conversation. Um, a lot of information was exchanged, and we were grateful for that. Afterwards, we rode over to the Savannah Gardens, and actually, she had the chance to go into one of our homes there on Pennsylvania Avenue uh, to go over and visit what was going on over there, to go into the house of one of the residents there. And I will tell you, it was a, um, a great opportunity for the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development for this country to see someone in Savannah who needed a hand up. And she got it in Savannah because of the Dream Maker program uh, in Savannah Gardens. And so uh, for me, that was really exhilarating. Afterwards, we went by the Tiny House Project so she could see not only what we're doing for veterans um, in the 48 houses that are there, but also in the houses that are now um, above ground construction that we're building. Uh, to make sure that uh, people who need a home have a home. And so we're not running away from big choices. We're not running away from big decisions. We're going hard in the paint and we're tackling them head on. So I'm proud to announce this morning that this year, the city of Savannah not only met, but exceeded many of our goals around affordable housing initiatives. Think about this. Last year, a record $8.4 million was invested in the Savannah Affordable Housing Fund. 8.4. That exceeded by 100 percent the $4 million goal in 2001. The Housing Savannah Action Plan set a goal of benefiting 640 households in 2023. Last year, our activities, when completed, will benefit 766 households, again, exceeding our goals. We set a goal of raising $2.7 million last year for the Savannah Affordable Housing Fund, $2.7 million. We exceeded that number as well, raising $5.8 million. And we thank our partners at the Galvin Foundation and the Georgia Ports Authority for stepping up in a big, big way. In 2023, there were a number of projects completed, including 16 new homes at the Savannah Gardens for families experiencing homelessness. We assisted the Chatham Savannah Authority for the Homeless in completing the 12 final tiny homes for veterans at the COVID Dundee, and we have launched construction on 40 new cottages next door to be used for people experiencing and exiting homelessness. Last year, we assisted 392 reenters renters, I'm sorry, with security deposits and other forms of rental assistance, doubling the amount of residents that we've helped in 2022. This is real-time help. 152 homeowners were assisted last year, most of whom were senior citizens. 58 modest income home buyers were helped with the purchase of their first home. So 58 people who did not have homes last year are today in their own home this year. And Housing Savannah purchased 35 
vacant blighted properties that will be eventually developed into neighborhoods benefiting affordable housing. So we're seeing the benefits of the work that we set out to do, uh, not only in 2020 upon my election, but also 2021 when we established and adopted the Housing Savannah Plan. This is good government at work, going hard, getting it done, and I will tell you we're only getting started. And we're looking forward to not only meeting goals uh, for 2024, we're looking forward to exceeding them. And so um, this work does not get done alone or in a vacuum. And so I'm so grateful to uh, our city manager, Jay Melder, Team Savannah, um, our housing guru, Martin Freddy. Um, his real job is Director of Neighborhood and Housing Services, or Housing and Neighborhood Services. Um, Executive Director of Housing Savannah, Laura Lane McKinnon. Uh, Community Housing Services Agency Director, Anita Smith-Dixon. Jennifer Dulong, the Executive Director of the Chatham County Authority for the Homeless. And Stephanie Capel, Executive Director of the Interagency Council on Homelessness. We have a great team. We're doing excellent work. The nation is taking notice of the work that we're doing. And more importantly, beyond taking notice, we're changing real lives in Savannah. And I'm just excited about that. Earlier this month, the City Council unanimously passed approval of the installation of a new marker um, in the new Taylor Square. And that was an historic day. And another historic day is coming up on February the 10th at 11 a.m. when the city of Savannah will host an epic event, really a lot, once in a lifetime event, but for us really twice in our lifetime, uh, as we will name the brand new Taylor Square. For those of you who remember, uh, uh, last year, I believe it was, we named Yamacross Square. Um, we have a lot in store. On February the 10th, we're going to sing, dance, we're going to celebrate, we're going to reflect, and we're going to come together as a community. And we are expecting to be joined by so many wonderful people uh, who worked hard uh, on all ends to help make this happen. So we hope that you will join us on this historic day as we honor this great woman with a great dedication. We will be closing down the streets around Taylor Square from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, as we dedicate this square. Uh, the primary portion of our dedication ceremony will be from 11 to 2, but the festivities will continue at 6 p.m. as we have more special events for everyone to enjoy. Again, a great day for Savannah. I also want to remind folks of two very important events happening at the Savannah Cultural Arts Center. Our first applications for the Weave a Dream program are now open. Uh, this incredible initiative provides funding for small nonprofit organizations working in arts and cultural programming. An informational session will be held on Thursday, February 1st at 1230 p.m. at the Cultural Arts Center at 201 Montgomery Street and virtually via Zoom. And to RSVP, you can email SCA C contracts at savannahga.gov. S C A C contracts at savannahga.gov. To learn more and apply for Weave of Dream, uh, visit savannahga.gov forward slash arts. savannahga.gov forward slash arts. And on this Saturday, February the 3rd, the second annual Black Art Expo will be held at the Cultural Arts Center from noon to 4 p.m. There will be over 30 vendors and performers, food trucks at this year's expo. Uh, artists will be offering 2D art, jewelry, fiber pieces, photography, prints, and more. Inside the Ben Tucker Theater, performers will be singing, dancing, playing instruments, and offering spoken word art throughout the day. And we invite everyone to come out and enjoy this expo, which is free and open to the public. That is from noon to 4 p.m. this Saturday at the Cultural Arts Center at 201 Montgomery Street. That's noon to 4 p.m. this Saturday at the Cultural Arts Center, 201 Montgomery Street. Uh, just for points of information, um, the Savannah City Council um, have been out of town for most of the week. 
uh, participating in the Georgia Municipal Association's um, annual legislative conference in Atlanta. Uh, tomorrow uh, begins the annual Savannah Chatham Day um, observances, and so the Savannah City Council will be uh, engaged in that. Um, tomorrow we have a day of activities with our legislators. Um, Wednesday is the annual uh, event at the, um, the railroad depot. And then on Thursday, uh, events, um, roundtables, and a gathering with our legislators and our chamber. Um, also, on Monday, on February the 5th, the Savannah City Council will be engaged in our retreat. Um, and we will send out more information about that. Um, it is at the uh, St. Simons, St. Simons Island. Um, and the purpose of this is really for us to vision our direction for the next four years. Uh, those of you to remember, I did that at the beginning of our first term, and it was fruitful because it provided a direction, uh, provided consensus on where this council wanted to go. Uh, city council is a team sport, and so our staff needs very clear di direction in terms of what we want to do. Um, and certainly this is a public meeting, so obviously anyone who wants to join us down there uh, can do that and listen to the discussion. Uh, more coming from our uh, public relations and marketing team over the next coming days. So that ends my prepared remarks, and I'll answer any questions you may have. Good morning. Good morning. Um, in the wake of Specialist Moffitt's death, have you heard about any plans for funeral services, and also, what's your message to Savannah's military community, particularly young people who are thinking about enlisting in service? Um, we have not, obviously. Um, I do know that there is an um, extensive protocol, um, particularly when it relates to um, military deaths out of country, and so the military is very good at that, um, and we don't want to get in the way of that. Um, there, it's, it's, a, it's a soldier, but it's also someone's little girl. And so um, we're going to be respectful of that, um, and, and then the city of Savannah will uh, fit in as we, as we can and as we uh, feel the need and opportunity to. Um, again, I think it's, it's pretty early um, right now, but um, we'll make sure that when she returns home um, that she'll have the hero's welcome that, that she deserves. Um, I will tell you that it's still um, no greater honor in serving uh, in the armed forces of this country, certainly serving as a first responder in this country. Um, it continues to be on um, professions of honor, um, professions of service. Um, and so for young people, um, it is still a very viable way uh, to go. Um, although we have these unfortunate incidents occur, and this was an attack, um, from what I understand, um, you know, most of our military uh, complete their tours of duty. Um, you know, they're, they're affected, they're changed, but they serve their tours and they come home. Every member of our military um, is very aware of the fact um, that when they leave, there's a possibility. And I think that is what makes uh, Brianna's service and everyone's service, um, to have that level of maturity to understand that when you're going in harm's way, harm might get you. And, um, you know, it obviously could have been my little girl. Um, and so, you know, I feel for that parent. Um, I just buried a parent but I've heard there's no greater pain than burying a child. But hopefully uh, her family will take heart um, in the scripture that I just mentioned, um, that, that she is a hero, we regard her as a hero, um, and so she'll always be remembered as a hero. Have you been able to talk with her family? And if so, what, what can you tell us about that conversation? Um, some members of the extended family, um, and again, I want to be respectful of time and place, um, and so I expect to do that uh, within uh, the coming days uh, to extend our condolences and obviously to extend our support in whatever way they feel uh, we can help to support them. 
I want to ask you about uh, Secretary Fudge's visit, visit yesterday, over $4 million for continuum of care services here in Savannah Chatham. Are there any stipulations on how that money can be spent? And off the top of your mind, where should that money go? Um, again, the, the issue is that the continuum of care is a plan. It's a plan, and it's a plan that contains partners. And so that continuum of plan, a continuum of care, um, really dictates where it goes. You fund the plan. You don't fund the partners. You fund the plan. So um, in my mind, the, the experts are the, the partners of our interagency council um, and of our continuum of care partners. And so um, wherever they put it, obviously they're doing well enough to get the increase. Um, but I, I really want to highlight um, during uh, my administration, we've had seven secretaries seven cabinet secretaries in this city, um, some more than once. Um, but I think it really speaks volumes that Savannah matters, uh, the coast matters, um, and people are recognizing that Savannah as Georgia's first city uh, is really assuming its rightful place. And I'm really happy because it also highlights the, the outstanding work um, that our partners do here on the ground every single day. And so when the federal government is able to take notice um, and bring the types of funds they bring here, um, you know, again, I think that Secretary Fudge, uh, and she told me as much, I um, was just so impressed by uh, Savannah, and she said it, you know, they have a plan. And, you know, so we don't mind funding plans when we know where the work is going. So, again, um, just happy for our city, happy for those of us that are engaged in that work every day. I want to ask you about Savannah Chatham Day. What priorities, issues do you expect to be at the forefront of your conversations over the next two days? Oh, well, a couple of things. Um, and as you know, the city of Savannah has a uh, legislative agenda. Um, and so it's our wish list, so to speak, about the things we want our legislative delegation to take to heart. Um, for us, it's about really playing, um, in some cases, playing offense, some cases, playing defense. Um, Housing is still a major issue for us. Um, I am still very, very supportive of some type of housing stabilization. Um, here in this community, we have seen people whose rate, rents have been raised three, four, five hundred dollars literally in a single month. That's not right. Um, and I just think that um, the state should allow us to um, enact some common sense regulations that. You know, just like we do with price gouging when there is a national, when there's an emergency, we don't allow people to raise gas this much or raise this. That much. I just think that, you know, landlords should be able to raise their rent, but they shouldn't raise it three, four, five hundred dollars. It's, it's contributing to our housing issue. Um, we certainly want to continue to push for common sense gun legislation um, that makes sense in our community. Um, Georgia continues to be the hot spot of of illegal guns and guns used, and I just think that, you know, too many people who should not have guns have guns, um, and we're continuing to work with the state to help us with that. Um, obviously, we're continuing to uh, fight against preemption uh, as it relates to the state government. You know, the fact is, Savannah, we, we could take care of ourselves. Um, we know the needs for us here locally. Um, we want to make sure that we are continually engaged in that. So it's a variety of, of issues. Um, this is our annual opportunity where Savannah takes over Atlanta. And I mean, literally, there are hundreds of Savannians that are either in Atlanta now or making their way there. Um, I'll join them today. But, uh, you know, the goal is, you know, that Savannah matters. And we don't want them to forget that. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The whole country is really feeling the loss right now of our fallen soldiers, but we're really especially feeling it here at home. Is there a way that we're going to be able to honor Brianna's memory, or how can we honor her memory? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, I think it's a little too early. Um, well, people have reached out, want to know what they could do. Um, I want to make sure that um, our citizens that want to show love do it in a way that makes sense to Brianna and her family. And so uh, I want to have those conversations, uh, talk with the military. Our Veterans Council has already reached out wondering how they can help. Um, you know, we, we see this happening across the country. Um, and now it's happened here. And so, again, we want to make sure that we um, 
uh, encircled his family with love, care, and support. Um, not to do it in a very intr in intrusive way, but again, do it in a way that's, that's supportive to them. Um, we've all felt that loss in one way or another because she was over there defending us. And so, um, you know, once we, we, we have that all figured out, we'll make sure. Uh, and we hope and expect that every uh, Savannahian will, will figure out a way to honor the family in a way that um, honors her memory and is supportive to the family. Thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. You good? Best I can. Okay. Um, as far as Brianna goes, do we have any information on when she is returning home? I do not. I expect to have uh, some conversations with, with the military and, and her family. Again, I do know there's a protocol. Um, obviously, um, it uh, has the, the feelings of a, a, a terrorist attack of some sort, so um, I'm sure that there are investigative um, measures that have to be taken. And then, of course, you know, the, the transfers and um, bring her back. So I do not know how and when, but again, once we know, you know, as we're able to release it, we will. For Susie Taylor King? Su Susie King Taylor, yes, Susie King Taylor, sorry. No problem. Are we going to have a plaque or a statue or anything to honor her? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have approved the writing for a commemorative marker to be placed on the, on the square. Um, in all of our squares, we, you would notice we have consistent signage. Uh, it has the last name of the person and then square. So even if the prior John C. Calhoun, it was Calhoun Square. So this will be called Taylor Square. So there'll be signage both at the, um, um, the north and south ends of the square. Um, but the council approved a commemorative marker. I thought it was really important for us not to erase history. Um, if we do that, we become just as guilty as people before us who did it. Um, it's important that people know the square was named Calhoun and know the dates it was Calhoun. And more importantly, why the city of Savannah and, and particularly the brave councilmen and women of the 139th administration felt that name uh, needed to be removed, and they removed the name. And then the process that was undertaken to choose a name for the square and how this community engaged in a very thoughtful and deliberative process to do that, and we did that. And, and so um, we have to tell the story um, in a very concrete and granted way so that um, when we pass for the scene, people can walk by and see the history of the square. So you're going to try to in integrate? Yeah, yes, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, um, we will be unveiling the marker as well. So uh, for us, this is not a celebration of the slavery, this is a celebration of the slave. And then finally, uh, for Black History Month, is there anything we can expect that will be brand new for Savannah this year? Well, uh, for us, black history is 24-7. It's 365 days a year. Um, we, we, we celebrate everybody every year. And so um, for Black History Month, the Black Heritage Festival is always uh, great and exciting. Um, we have specifically put the Susie King Taylor dedication uh, in that space for that reason. Um, and then, you know, I'm invited always to schools and events, um, observances all over the place. And so in a city like Savannah, where we, we value heritage of everyone and we va value history of everyone, um, you know, new and exciting in Savannah is really every day, and so there are a plethora of events that our community are, um, is encouraged to engage in and take advantage of and, and participate in. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to bring up, you mentioned uh, common sense uh, firearm legislation. I just want to see, if, is there an update on the status of the um, firearm and cars um, ordinance that you had proposed, I think, way back in August? Coming soon. Coming soon? Coming soon. Um, I want to have a ordinance that makes sense, that addresses the issues, uh, and that meet the legal test. Um, and so um, we're very close to having that, and I'm expecting to uh, present that probably within the next 30 to 60 days. So um, I think we're there. We're, we're getting ready to land that, that plane. Um, and then uh, as far as uh, I know the Savannah Police Department and um, public housing has installed some cameras around the, throughout the city. Um, I think the goal is to catch crime, uh, specifically in public housing. So I just want to see, 
you know, what was, what's the purpose of that and how exactly did that conversation get started that you wanted to implement that or the city did? Well, I think that, um, and this has been a conversation with the city and housing authority for quite some time. Um, we know that some of their properties are very densely populated. Uh, a lot of people, and we, you know, the data shows that we have incidents occurring in there. So, um, as much as it is a catch crime, it's also a deterrent for crime. Uh, it allows our police officers, again, in using technology, uh, to be able to have eyes and ears and see what's going on uh, across the city. We also have cameras throughout the city. Um, and so, again, the smarter we're able to police, the better we're able to police. And so, uh, in these areas, we'll have the cameras there uh, for the protection of those who live there. Um, they have the right uh, and should be able to live uh, in relatively um, uh, safe surroundings. Um, we know the housing authority is very strict on people who live in public housing who, who commit uh, felonious acts. Um, they kick them out. And so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, whatever we could do to keep people safe, we're going to do it. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. the housing as well. So sure. you said, and forgive me if I get things wrong, you said there's about 45-ish tiny houses at the moment? There, there, in the tiny houses, there are, there are 48 veteran houses, and we're building 40 um, new, new homes. This year? Oh yeah, yeah. Ish. Yeah. So yeah. So 48 are up now. Those right. are the veteran houses, and we're building 40. So, and I understand. And again, forgive me if my numbers are wrong, but there's somewhere between like 750 and 1,000 homeless citizens around Savannah. That was you, you referring to the point in time count, and again, that is on a given snapshot in any given day. And okay. so, um, and they are varying degrees of homelessness. So. Right. Right. So my my question is like, how big is the dream? We have like, let's just say we complete the 40 houses this year, then we have like 80. Do you envision a time within a decade or so that we could have, you know, an area of hundreds of people? Um, and maybe, I, I think the goal, or the goal is to make sure that no one living in Savannah, um, everyone in Savannah has a roof over their head. I think that's just the goal. Now, the question is, how do we get there? Um, to be honest with you, um, I was liking a tiny house myself. Um, for my needs, I mean, I don't need a whole lot of space. I just needed, you know, a place to lay, go to the bathroom, wash, and eat. Um, and so across the country, we're really seeing variations of tiny homes that have become quite economical for people that are not necessarily homeless. And so for us, we really have to really create um, a variety of types of homes because people change and as they change your needs change um, for us it's really about I think to your point density and we're only going to arrive at affordability by creating density so do we do that by going up do we do that by going out do we do that by going smaller and going out I think those are the types of things you know I would not put uh, aside the thought of having um, a tiny house village that is virtual, that, that's, that, that's vertical, you know, more so than being horizontal. So I think the sky's the limit for us. I think the good news is that we have the right people that are, um, have their hands to the plow. They're looking at the horizon. They're seeing uh, coming trends. We're looking across the country about what's working. And then we are also creating new avenues of our own. So. I'm excited about what this means for us, um, but more importantly, the federal government has committed to, um, to helping. You know, they're saying as long as you have a plan, we'll help you. And so we have a plan, you know, they helped us with $4 million, I'm trying to get more of that money. I hope you do. We I hope so too. We love our homeless neighbors. We <laughs> yes, we do. We love, we love everybody. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right. All right, well, thank you all so much. I certainly hope you, you join. Oh, do I have any questions from, from, the, from Mayor Johnson SAV on Facebook? Do I have anything? No questions. Well, good morning to all of you. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for your prayers and, and your well wishes. Um, we're, we're, we're getting better. So, thank you all so much. Hopefully, you'll join us in Atlanta on. Um, uh, tomorrow and Thursday, maybe in St. Simons on Monday and Tuesday. Thank you all for being Savannah Strong.